So I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. But one of the things, see, I live in a retirement community, so I don't get any kids that come knocking on the door for candy. And I wanted to get out and celebrate Halloween. Of course, make a video. And I wanted to get out in the woods in the dark. I haven't hiked in the dark in a long time, except maybe around the neighborhood, but never in the woods. Now, I don't know if I get really brave, I may take you down into the swamp with a headlamp. We'll get another clip here as the sun sets. I was also hoping to get some wildlife because a lot of times at this time in the evening, this is when you get to really see some wild stuff. All right, so we're getting, getting dark. Now I had to change the settings on the phone. Problem is, I can't see where the hell I'm going. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of though? Remember that commercial where, I, it was the greatest commercial ever. And they were all outside, it might've been a Geico, I think. I don't know, I don't remember, but they were all, it was a group of young, young people, maybe in their teens or 20s. And they were going, we should just get out of here. We should get in the car and go. And then uh, the, the one kid goes, no, let's go hide behind the chainsaws. <laughs> and they went and they hid behind the chainsaws and they're all cowering there. And of course the guy, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy comes in and he's shaking his head like he couldn't believe it happened. Well, you know, I mean, I guess we're, we're kind of like that as a human race, aren't we? I mean, you know, I'm thinking seriously about going down into the swamp. What, what lunatic? And you know, when in the movies, you always think, oh, nobody would be that stupid. Why Why are you going to open that door? You know that the, something bad's going to happen when you open that door. Why are you going to, why are you hiking through the woods? That cybersecurity guy. What happens if you go down in the swamp and something happens at night, you know, or we see something because there's bear down in there. You know, I imagine the bear moving around at night. Boy, I got to move slow in case I bump into a tree or something. Anyway, I had to, just so you know, if you ever do a night video, you have to change the settings. I think I'm off trail. <laughs> well, maybe it goes this way. No, I'm okay, I'll be on trail. But uh, yeah, you gotta change the settings. Yeah, I have to go to 30, which is a lower shutter speed. And then you try to take the super study mode off. So if this video is jumping around a little bit, that's because of the settings. All right, I gotta cut this off before I trip on something. Right now I'm lost, but I thought we'd get the toad on the on the video. I'm trying to get down into the swamp. I don't know why I took a wrong turn somehow. Okay, we made it to the top, but look at these shiny bugs on the ground here. I've been seeing those all along the way. We are just entering the swamp. I took off the headphones and I I got my walking stick. I have to admit this is scary as hell. I've never been in the top of a swamp at night before. I took out the uh, the mic so you can hear what I'm hearing all around me. So the guy that complains about the crunchy crunchy noises. I just wanted you to hear what's at the top of the swamp at night. Boy, I tell you, I haven't been back here. Look at all the shiny stuff. I don't think that's water. Oh, it's got a cobweb in my face. Wow, this is crazy. Oh man, I almost tripped. All right, let's uh, let's get to some scary movies while I'm out here. You know, I don't know about you, but I thought Jaws. Jaws was. I mean, were you afraid if after you saw that movie of going in the water? remember I was. I was scared to death. It was kind of like after Friday the 13th, like I said, checking under my bed. You know, the, the other thing is there's a lot of, a lot of history around Halloween. You know, if I think the satanic cults, and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't this their most holy night? I mean, you know, it's like the the, the kids' movies, what was Hocus Pocus, where everything came out on Halloween. You know, I, I don't know, I think I would hear anything 
approaching me back here. But you know the the scary part for me is as long as I got this headlamp. Well, if the headlamp went out, that, <laughs> that, would, that would suck big time, wouldn't it? Can you imagine trying to find your way out of here without a headlamp? But the other part is I was worried about the snakes. You know, I bet the snakes come out at night, don't you? How many snakes are back here? You know, another scary movie to put on your Halloween list was Aliens. Good Lord, look at all this, man. I feel like I'm walking through... A, but Aliens, the movie. Oh, shit, what the hell was that? Oh, God dang it. I just bumped into something. It scared the hell out of me. Anyway, it was funny because back there I stepped on a big old leaf and it was loud as hell. I thought, man, what the hell was that? You ever been back in the swamp at night? There was also the thing. Remember the thing? The swamp monster? God dang it. I gotta get over top of this. Oh, jeez. You can tell nobody's been back here in a while. And certainly not at night. There's a spider wheel. Get that out of the way. All right. Whoa! Shit, I almost tripped again. Uh, not the smartest thing you've ever done, eh? is it? That cybersecurity guy. I'm trying to think of some other scary movies for you. And it's Jaws. It, well, Aliens too. Well, I didn't find it all that scary. And it was scary, don't get me wrong. It was just... The beginning of that movie was the greatest depiction of what the Marine Corps, the United States Marine Corps, would be like in the future. Because that's very much what it used to be like before it went woke under the Democrats. So I was, I was when I watched that scene, I went, man, how the hell did they, whoa, make that, I'm tripping on all the roots and stuff because I can't see where I am. I can see ahead of me, but I can't see right down at my feet. Man, look at this trail. This is something else. I don't know if I'm... I'm wondering if I'm off trail. Can't be. But I've never seen a trail this bad before. Oh, God, look at this. Wow. Not the smartest thing. And you're not the smartest tool in the shed, that cybersecurity guy. Maybe you should be the one that goes and hides behind the chainsaws, right? All right, we're going to... I'll get another clip here in a minute as we get further along because I did see there that marker means I am at least on the trail so I just want to get home and eat some food and quit scaring the shit out of myself so I'm going to break on out of here I can see the houses to my right I know there's a trail that goes off to the right and will take me back to the car and get me out of the, the woods Anyway, wouldn't it be great sometime, maybe not on Halloween, to come back here with a group of people, make sure you got some guns, <laughs> and hike down into the swamp. And that's another great movie, the swamp thing. Have you ever seen the swamp thing or the blob? The blob was kind of scary in its day. I think they did a remake on that. You live here? Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe you know what a zombie is. When a person dies and is buried, it seems there's certain voodoo priests who, who have the power to bring him back to life. How horrible. It's worse than horrible because a zombie has no will of his own. You see them sometimes, walking around blindly with dead eyes, following orders, not knowing what they do, not caring. You mean like Democrats? You said uh, over the weekend, referring to it, there's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. Well, look, you were comparing that rally to a Nazi rally? Look, I'm comparing it to the hate that came out of this, and I think they confirmed that. You stand by that comparison, though, to a Nazi rally? Well, look, the rally, you saw it for yourself. I'll let the American public make the decision of what they saw. What about you, so, though? So I know what I saw, and I'll just leave it at that. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. October 31st, 2024. Ooh, Halloween, Halloween. So I wanted to start with a couple of Halloween topics. They're not very scary, <laughs> but I did want to remind you that it, what 
a little over what was it two months ago somewhere around there that trump just had his ear shot off now that's bad enough but i mean to, just to show you what there's on the line with this election we still don't know anything about what actually took place that day because the deep state fbi covered up all the evidence so i just wanted to point that out to you seems like with the election right around the corner everybody has forgotten about that that was a horrific scene and the poor fireman that got killed everybody seems to have a short memory we seem to have forgotten about that and then i wanted to tell my my story if anybody can do dream analysis please tell me i, I don't get those nightmares remember the nightmares where you you're running and the, the beast is behind you and you just can't you know you, He's catching up on you, and you're just like, how come I'm not getting some distance between me and the monster, man? I'm running, and I'm running, but it, it seems like I'm going nowhere. It's like you're in molasses or something. I don't know if you ever had those dreams. I always had those dreams, and I, I remember after Friday the 13th. That was the scariest movie I, up until that point I had ever seen. That night, I remember getting home after the movie, and I remember when that arrow came up through the bed, right through the, oh, it might have been, I can't remember whether it was a man or a woman, right through their throat. I was, I literally checked under my bed. <laughs> I, was, I mean, it was just, so, it was so deeply disturbing. It was, you know, and of course you look back on the, the Halloween movie, the classics. But, uh, but I wanted to talk about this recurring dream that I keep having, dream analysis somebody, is I, I'm in a disorganized place. It could be a house that we're trying to sell or somebody's trying to sell. Usually it's not me, but I, I'm trying to get clean up. You know, there's trash all over the floor or there's there's something that I'm trying to sort. And, I, and no matter how hard I try, I can't get it organized. And, and it's just different venues. And then I wake up and I just kind of feel icky <laughs> it's just like what the hell kind of dream was that you know but it's it's in different venues it's not you know like an, you know if it was recurring in a house or something like that but no i don't understand it it's just bizarre i know it's not scary <laughs> but, I, but i did want to start the video with some halloween halloween is here the uh the next uh because we got it, the election is the most important thing and so that's why i'm starting all these videos trying to help Trump over the finish line. Most people only watch the first maybe five minutes of the video, if, if that. So I always got to make sure I get the stuff that I want you to see up front the most. Although usually if you stay to the end of my videos, I put some good material there, uh, but that you probably want to know about. So uh, let's get into, uh, well, first thing is always try to help you out. Silver dropped, you know, the stock market went down I don't know, 300 some points. It's always up and down. If you want to learn how to trade that, Johnny Bravo, take his swing trade course, I guess. I've never taken it, so I can't vouch for it. I do want to take it though, but I just don't have time. So anyway, uh, silver dropped also. It went down, I don't know, about 40 cents. Now it's like I said, it's still hovering between 33, 34. Now I actually paid more than that. I, I went out last night and I told you I don't have any money to buy silver, but uh, SD Bullion, and I'm, I think it was only 48 hours, so probably too late by the time you're watching this video. But they always do this every now and then, and they offered a, a Silver Eagle for a spot. That's unheard of. You know, Silver Eagles sell for about $6 over spot. So immediately on that one coin, you're saving $6. The problem is, you know, if you could just order that one coin, I'd do it in a second, but then they charge you for shipping. And that offsets any savings that you have by getting the coin around spot. So it's not even not even worth it. But the way SD Bullion works is if you add maybe a, a couple hundred onto that, I don't know the amount. It seems like I never know when they're going to try to charge me for shipping or not. And of course, if you've got it direct withdrawal from your checking account, uh, you also get it cheaper that way uh, than you would if you bought it on a credit card. So anyway, I, I was looking and I said, man, I don't want any of this other, I can't afford to do a whole tube of, you know, one ounce coins or anything. So they had a, uh, a bunch of half dollars, you know, 90% silver, junk silver, for $239 or so. 
So when you combine, I could combine that with the with the, um, the silver eagle at spot. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. It was only maybe a little under 250, which I can't afford right now. But uh, I think that, you know I keep encouraging you buy silver, buy silver, buy silver. I mean right now the dollar with bricks it's going down, baby. We're going to see hyperinflation here in the United States. I can't reiterate it enough. Buy silver now. How you doing? Anyway, so uh, let's get into the, 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 the election because that's where I got to focus these videos the most. Greatest troll ever, but I'm going to try to get everything that I can. Uh, I, I don't know if you knew, uh, Biden came down and he called all of uh, Trump supporters garbage. <laughs> then the media tried to cover it up saying he was talking about the guy that uh, said Puerto Rico was garbage. Who knows, maybe he was, I mean, but still it was, it was a great uh, statement, you know, cause I was like, what the hell? I can't believe he just said that. Even if it was a gaffe, you know, we, we know that Joe Biden gaffes all the time and he's, he's obviously not mentally there. <laughs> so, so you know, if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, that's fine. But anyway, what the, what the fun part was, was Trump, Trump's the greatest troll that ever existed. Trump, I swear, if he hadn't been a, a real estate mongrel, he could have been a comedian. And uh, I, I've got all the, the video or the video that I could find, uh, you know, because the first one was he was in, he actually got into a dump truck. This was in uh, Wisconsin. Can't remember what the city that was. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. And so he, he rode up and he actually had Trump painted on the side of the, uh, the dump truck. And uh, so I thought that was unbelievable. <laughs> How the hell did he get that dump truck painted up with the Trump sign, you know, in such a brief period of time? And uh, anyway, so then he went and he did the rally, and uh, it was uh, it was freaking great. And he, I let's just watch him. I don't even want to tell you about the jokes. So this outfit, you know, is uh, when they when he called us all garbage. How stupid! What a stupid word that blows deplorable away, don't you think? Of course, I thought irredeemable when she said deplorable or irredeemable. I thought irredeemable was actually worse, but deplorable seemed to catch up. But this garbage stuff blows, blows it away. So I'm in this beautiful plane. I'm enjoying myself. I have a wonderful suit on. And one of my people came in and said, sir. You know, the word garbage is the hottest thing right now <laughs> out there. The hottest thing out there. Sir, would you like to drive a garbage truck? <laughs> now, we're about, you know, 30 minutes from landing. We had to do this pretty quick. I said, it's sort of cool, though, isn't it? Because, you know. And I said, you know, I think that's okay, but you know, I don't feel comfortable wearing a suit. And they pulled up this garbage truck. I don't know how the hell they did it so fast. I have very capable people. They put a big sign on the truck. Did you see it? I think they showed it. And then they said, sir, we have a vest. I said, well, should I leave my suit on and put it over the vest? But that doesn't look very good, right? That doesn't look good. So I said, all right, look, let me take it off. And then I actually said, I climbed into the truck, but here's the, so I said, how the hell do you get into this truck? It's way up high. It's a big one. <laughs> this was a beauty. I said, you didn't have to buy it that big, right? You have to get it that big. They brought this brand new, gorgeous truck, wonderful driver. He looked like uh, Cary Grant in his prime. You know who that is? <laughs> this beautiful driver. And he drove that big thing up. And I said, man, this is bad, because now I have all the cameras are all watching. Look, look at all the fake news. They were most of them. <laughs> now, most of them, many of them were there. And I'm saying, oh, boy, 
You know, one little mistake with these guys and your, your political career is over. You can't even. So I said, man, if I don't get up there, this is going to be very embarrassing. <laughs> these stupid people, they'll say, he's cognitively and physically impaired. <laughs> and I can't do that when I'm alongside of this great athlete. I got to get up to that. So, so look, so the stair, the first stair is like up here. I'm saying, shit. <laughs> so, so I had the adrenaline going and I made it. <laughs> I made it. And then I gave a little news conference from the front of the, you know, they asked their wise guy questions and everything. And then uh, we drove about two feet. I got out. Got in the plane. And then I got in the car and I'm driving over here and I have this still on. And I come into the arena and I say, where's my jacket? I want to get out of this thing. And they said, it would be unbelievable if you could wear it on stage. I said... I said, no way. I got 25,000 people standing outside. I got all these people here. There's no way I'm wearing it on stage. They said, oh, okay, sir. I said, get me my jacket. But if you did, you know, it actually makes you look thinner. I said, oh. And they got me. I said, I want to wear it on stage. When they said I look thinner, I said, in that case, I'll wear it on stage. I may never wear a blue jacket again. I may go. I may go in this. I said that. That was my. That was the word. That was the key. Sir, you look thinner. So anyway, so we had a little fun about a very serious subject. We had a little fun about a time where our country is not having a lot of fun because we're. We're not doing well as a country, but we're going to be doing well very shortly. I promise you that. I'll put on everything. The other thing I'm going to tack on to this was what you didn't know, because I, I commented. I said, wouldn't it be great if Trump actually, you know, worked as a garbage man for a little while? And I, no, he didn't. He just trolled it. But then Vivek, maybe he got my comment. He turned around and actually did it. And I've got that video, too. So Vivek's out. I don't know how long, how many hours he worked as a garbage man, but I mean that's part of the Trump dream team, right? If you've watched the last video, that's the Trump dream team. And I did want to talk about that video for just one second because I have to apologize to you. I uh, I don't know what happened. The settings got messed up on some of my software on the computer. I wasn't sure if it was in. It was reminding me of my old computer days. If you've ever worked on a computer for eight hours. You know, and something messes up and you're trying to fix it. You know, you're tweaking one thing and then you try it and then you tweak another thing and you try it. And then, of course, we got YouTube these days and I go up to YouTube and I watch a video on the settings. And then finally things got so out of whack. You know, I just completely uninstalled the OBS software, reinstalled it because I wasn't sure if it was the DaVinci rendering software or the OBS software. And then when I reinstalled it, it went right back to the settings. I was like, what the hell? I mean, because I said, take everything, nuke it all, right? Well, it turns out it left the settings down buried in the Microsoft directories. And I found he found a video that told me where those settings were so I could delete them to start over. I mean, it was good because I was two versions behind on the OBS. So I got the latest version. Still hadn't fixed the video, but I'd already put the video up. And if you saw it, I apologize because it just jumped like this. And it wasn't, you know, wasn't smooth. The audio was okay. The audio was actually great. So I'm not going to complain about that, but you couldn't enjoy the, the, the video. And uh, so I redid that last night. I finally figured out the settings. And I mean, I, I bet I spent 12, 15 hours. So if you watch the first video, I'm sorry, it's, there's a new version of it up. It's basically the same video, except a lot better. And I even improved some of the rendering settings. All right, 
Let's do it, man. I got it. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, what, what are we doing here? Okay. Right up to here. Right here. Always lift a little. Wait, is it on? Yes. All right, sweet. Lift open. And then what are we doing? Pull, Can I... pull them both out. Pull them both out. You doing it right? Pull this one back too, or are you good? Sweet. Pretty good machinery, actually. It kind of works. Should I pull it back again? No, this, pull, this goes up. Should I pull it? Yeah, pull it out. Pull it out? Yep. All right, man. Let's do it. Thank you. Looks pretty Let's good. Go. Yes. The machinery's good. It's good machinery. I mean, it's like... You didn't even have to use the bat once. No, I know, exactly. <laughs> well, sometimes you might need to, actually. It's a... Uh, the, the machine works really well, man. All right, let's get some more. It's just the way they look down on half the country. It's disgusting. It's un-American. But it doesn't have to stay that way. And the way I look at it is, I don't care if you're voting for Kamala Harris or not. I'm not going to call you garbage. But the fact that Biden came out and said that, I think, was, was a turning point in this election. And we don't have to stay this, this country where you're just afraid to speak your mind anymore. So we'll talk about that in there. But I want to say thank you, guys. Ready to win an election? We'll get this job done. Ready to win. USA! 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 Let's do it, guys! This isn't one of these... Garbage. Very horrible. Yeah. Personally, what did that mean to you? I felt disrespected. If there's one thing that we can do, we're about, we're about six days away from being in a position to do it, okay? If there's one thing we can do to make life better for you and people who drive garbage trucks across this country, what is that going to be for you? Keep well, the prices down. Okay. Yeah. You think we can do that? We can do that. We promise you, man. You put us in there, we're going to get that job done. This man's been a great soldier. Give him a round of applause. Leo! 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 Leo's a good man, but... Wasn't that fantastic? <laughs> I mean, my God. He's the greatest troll ever. And uh, yeah, hopefully I found some Joe Biden footage of him making that comment. I don't know. I'm just going to, you know, whatever. Whatever you saw was what was there. The next uh, thing that happened, I haven't found this video, but it's the most creepy thing I've ever seen, was Joe Biden. Now, I want you to think, you know, when you look at this, you say, okay, you know, he's just being a grandpa. You know, maybe going down. Remember, you know, when, when my grandma would tickle the hell out of me or, you know, somebody might take, you know, your grandpa might blow in your chest when you're a kid. To, or I don't know if they did, did that. But anyway, something like that, you know, where they're just being affectionate. But anyway, Joe Biden goes down. I guess it was a Halloween party. And it looked like he tried. I mean, he was acting like he was going to bite this kid's leg. Or maybe he was just kissing. It was a little baby. Maybe he's just kissing the leg. And I was thinking, would you ever do that? I don't think I'd ever do that. Even if a woman, I mean, I mean, if a woman goes, would you please kiss his leg? I mean, I don't think they would say that. But I mean, if they did, I'd be like, you know, I'm not real comfortable doing that. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what, what do you think, man? I mean, I, so when he did it, if I can find that video, I was like, man, that is some creepy shit. And, and I, I, I got to, well, we'll watch it in HD because what I saw, when I saw it on Twitter, I can't tell if he was acting like he was going to bite the leg or what. And yeah, I'm trolling just a little bit, but uh, I just thought that was weird. So uh, then let's get into uh, a couple of other stories here. La Harris has distanced herself from Joe Biden's comments that Donald Trump's been referring to repeatedly. He's still got his high-vis vest on it when he drove the garbage truck earlier in the day. I want to bring in our Washington correspondent, Annalise Nielsen, who's in Pennsylvania. Annalise, give us a sense of how this is playing out there with the Republican Party able to turn out. What was a problem into now a, a gain for them politically off the back of Joe Biden's latest gaffe. 
Look, it's remarkable. It was an issue for them to manage and now it has completely gone in a 180. But we've had some of the best pictures visually from this election in the last few hours. So I just want to show you some fresh ones that we've had just come into the newsroom. So these are pictures of Joe Biden with kids visiting the White House in their costumes. Now, this always gives us some pictures, but this is an interesting one because we've seen these photos already circulating of Joe Biden biting the leg of a baby dressed like a turkey. Key. So it doesn't seem like the baby was too upset, but it's certainly one of those odd moments that just after his latest gaffe is now playing into this broader picture of Biden taking attention away from Kamala Harris. And this is the big problem her campaign's had since day one, taking over the ticket from Joe Biden, who's never explicitly given a reason why he stepped down other than he thought that someone else might have a better shot at winning. And this is the big problem with what we've seen with these garbage comments coming around Donald Trump supporters. Now, Donald Trump has now taken over that as well. Today, he got off the plane in Madison, Wisconsin, and right into a bespoke garbage truck wearing a high-vis vest. It's there he wanted to take back the insult of his supporters being called garbage and make light of it. And this is really important visually for the Trump campaign. He's been cast as the next dictator, a totalitarian, a petty dictator at that. And so having this lighthearted response to it takes some of that heat out in this last week of people who are being told they should be terrified by this guy who looks like he can take a joke. I think the Democrats have done a very poor job. We're leading in every, in every state. Uh, we're leading big. And I think that the comment made by really both of them, because there are really two of them, uh, about being garbage, maybe 250 million people. Uh, they shouldn't be talking. That's like deplorable for Hillary. This is the deplorable for Hillary. And uh, I think this is worse, actually. For Joe Biden to make that statement, it's really a disgrace. I love Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico loves me. I don't know. I don't know anything about a comedian. I just, I love Puerto Rico. Nobody's done more for Puerto Rico than me. I, I took care of them when they had the big hurricanes. And nobody, nobody gets along better with Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican people than me. So, Kieran, to take a step back and explain where this has all come from in the last few days, it all started with a comedian at the Madison Square Garden rally for Donald Trump speaking before Trump came on stage and making a joke saying that Puerto Rico was a pile of garbage floating in the ocean. Now, Puerto Ricans can't vote for president, but there are plenty living in America that can vote, in particular here in Pennsylvania, more than 400,000 of them in the state. So it's absolutely a voting block of the size that could change how this this critical battleground state comes out next Tuesday. What has happened, though, is that while Kamala Harris was giving this speech at the Ellipse, trying to cast herself as the president that's going to unite America, is going to take the heat out of it and be more respectful to those across the aisle, Joe Biden was inside the White House taking a phone call with Latino supporters for the Democrats. And in that, he described Donald Trump's supporters as garbage. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization of Latinos is unconscionable, and it's un-American. Let me be clear. I strongly disagree with any criticism of people based on who they vote for. It's, you heard my speech last night and continuously throughout my career. Uh, I believe that the work that I do is about representing all the people, whether they support me or not. Kieran, you heard Donald Trump there before reference Hillary Clinton's uh, remarks in the 2016 election about the deplorables. It absolutely has the same kind of emphasis when we're talking about an election where so many people are worried about cost of living and the economy and those are the kind of people that might not normally consider voting Republican but are thinking about it this time. To be told that they're garbage is the kind of thing that comes across as elitist and can isolate people. We've heard from people in Pennsylvania today about how they think it just casts them as like every other politician they're dealing with. And it goes into the same narrative that Donald Trump has, that he's the businessman, he's not a politician, despite having already been president himself. He led off with this at his rally in Madison, Wisconsin, wearing the high-vis vest right throughout to keep the joke going. This week, Kamala has been comparing her political opponents to the most evil mass murderers in history. 
And now speaking on a call for her campaign last night, Crooked Joe Biden finally said what he and Kamala really think of our supporters. He called them garbage. No way. No way. <laughs> and they actually mean it, even though without question, my supporters are far higher quality than Crooked Joe or Lion Kamala. Higher quality. Higher quality. My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. Check this out. I'm going to show you how I afforded this car. Okay, you ready? All right, $118 for car. Here and in uh, his press conference as well, or a discussion with journalists, what he also referenced was something we've noticed being on the campaign trail in so many swing states, that so many supporters and so much of the discussion around this election, it's either you're voting for Trump or you're voting against Trump. And a lot of people are indeed voting against Donald Trump. It may well get the Democrats over the line, but that is the singular focus of so much of the Democrats' campaigning at the moment. She talked last night and... All she talked about was Donald Trump. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I will speak about Donald Trump. Donald Trump, 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 Trump. she talked about because she and Joe have absolutely no achievements. They only have failure and gloom and death. And of course, Kieran, for those diehard Donald Trump supporters, they've gladly worn the title of deplorables for many years and now they're happily picking up garbage as well. Well, I believe everything basically that President Biden says is garbage himself. We're not garbage. We're not trash. We are the American people. But we're better than this. We can rise above. It will be the downfall of their campaign. So, Kieran, it is all still happening just six days out from the presidential election. The polls are so tight, and it's what we're seeing on the ground here. It is going to be absolutely knife edge from all appearances what the result will be. But, of course, we need to remember, even if a state's won by a tiny margin, whoever wins picks up all the Electoral College votes for that state, unless it's Nebraska or Maine. But for Pennsylvania, where I am, it's 19. So we could well see a landslide result in the Electoral College next Tuesday, mm. or we could have a very long count while they fight it out until the end. Annalise, thank you. As always, we'll talk to you soon. All right, getting back on the Halloween theme, we got to talk about the one of the scariest movies because the reason why it's so scary, you know, a lot of people don't believe in Satan or God, or maybe they just believe in Satan. <laughs> I won't say it. If you're a D. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I remember the movie and it was very, it was so disturbing because it was based on a true story. Uh, and if you, if you want to scare the hell out of yourself this Halloween, other than the Halloween movies, those were very good. Go back and watch The, uh, the Exorcist based on a true story. And uh, what was weird, if I recall, was there was a lot of weird happenings around that movie as they were making it. And from what I understand, I think I, I'll look it up if I can find anything. I'll, I'll, I'll duck, duck, go it when I get home. Uh, I think some people actually died making that movie under mysterious circumstances. So I thought that was, that's really, uh, that's disturbing. But uh, man, I tell you, at least, you know, if you want to believe the movie, if you want to believe it was based on a true story, I mean, if, imagine if you had been actually in the room with somebody possessed and in the movie, you know, speaking in different languages, speaking in tongues, you know, I, I tell you what, I, uh, I believe in God, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. But if I saw that, <laughs> I dare say I'd become a monk. I'd probably uh, go, you know, maybe I'd go join the damn priesthood, man. You know, I haven't seen anything like that.
firsthand for real. I mean, I, you know, you, you assume that the movie is, is based on the real thing, but anyway, that's what I wanted to give my, my favorite Halloween, because I do think we are in satanic times fighting a huge battle between good and evil right now. And I, I see it every day with all the stories. I mean, Bangladesh, what's going on there? You can look up that story. We won't talk about it. So we got to get back to the election because that's the most important thing. So there's a video out of uh, Michigan and uh, the Republicans caught him trying to cheat. And uh, once again, it goes back to the Dominion voting machines. Now, the only people that want those Dominion voting machines are Democrats. You understand that, right? Why would a Democrat want a voting machine instead of paper ballots? Okay, why? Ask yourself that. They want to cheat. They want to cheat. They're cheaters. That's who the Democrats are. They're cheating, lying people. If you've got Democrat friends, ask them that question. Why the hell do you want to use Dominion voting machines? Oh, I don't know. I'm just a meat puppet Democrat. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing. You'd think they'd at least want a fair election. But there's, a, there's all of these uh, lawyers lining up. They're all going to contest the election if Trump wins. Uh, if the Democrats can't cheat enough and Trump pulls it out, they're going to contest it. And, they, and wait, mark my words, they'll be out there bitching about the voting machines. Let's watch that, that Michigan woman right now. Yeah, this is a nationwide issue with Dominion voter access terminals in uh, in the counties that use them. And the voter access terminals, of course, not all all the machines, just the ones that are accessible, uh, have an issue with the uh, straight party voting and a programming issue that's again affected the machines nationwide. And I think all of us that use Dominion machines were were um, were unhappy to learn about this uh, during the. Uh, the testing period and, and um, as early voting began. So we're working with Dominion to, to seek accountability uh, on that front uh, and also have, are working with our clerks to ensure voters are aware of this uh, uh, programming issue that will, will require them to ensure they are uh, voting every section on the ballot. Do you think it's a bigger issue in Michigan because we do allow voters to cross over in ways that a lot of other states don't? Because we have straight parties. It's, it's not... It, it's, it's not uh, struck me as I've talked to my other colleagues in other states. They're just as upset about it as we are. <laughs> so, yeah, of course, surprised. All right, so that was her talking about the Dominion voting machine. Now, the, the next story I wanted to get to was Ted Cruz. Holy shit. I don't know what the... the George Soros has got it out for, <laughs> for Ted Cruz. The evil Palatine. Come on, man. Look at George Soros. Don't tell me he doesn't look just like the evil emperor on Star Wars. Palatine, right? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He's probably, you know, he's probably got demons in his bed that he just strokes their little heads, you know, at night. And goes, ah, my pet demon. Yes, I'm George Soros. Yes. But anyway, they've spent, according to Ted Cruz now, he said they've spent $100 million dollars trying to get Ted Cruz defeated. Now, I don't know about you, I don't listen to any advertisements anymore because usually they're just bull crap, you know. So we, we got the election fraud. The next story I wanted to get to was Virginia. And this is why I tell you all Democrats are cheaters. Okay, so here we go. So Virginia wanted to take illegal aliens off the voting rolls. I don't know if you followed this story. Okay, so they, they ended up, luckily, they had to take it all the way to the Supreme Court, which ought to tell you something right there. I mean, that should have been decided in a, in a lesser court. I mean, that's a, that's a no-brainer, right? Why would you want non-citizens voting in the U.S. election? They're called Democrats, Democrat cheaters, all right? Go ask your Democrat friend. Say, hey, man, why do you want illegal aliens voting in the election? Oh, they should be represented in some fact. They're here illegally. They broke the law, man. What the hell are you talking about? Oh my God, but anyway, so the Supreme Court did rule in Virginia's favor. Okay, goodness, goodness. But the disturbing part about the whole thing was three of the justices, including that, remember the black woman? I can't remember her name. They couldn't tell you what a woman was. <laughs> That's your DEI hire for the Supreme Court, if I've ever seen one, and I, uh, so anyway, uh, she and two other justices voted against taking illegal aliens off the voting rolls. Why would you do such a thing? 
That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Ask your Democrat friends. Well, do you believe in the Supreme Court decision? No, we think we should stack the Supreme Court. Now, we did get some, some good news. I wanted you to remember this. So maybe it's going to backfire on them. Who knows? I don't know. Everything looks like Trump. Make, make it too, too big to rig. That's, the, that's, the, that's what we got to do. Too big to rig. But anyway, so the, um, uh, somebody was pointing out, you remember when Pence, when Trump, you know, back on January 6th, you know, the worst, what is it? They got to watch the Babylon Bee movie. <laughs> the worst day in history, you know, and nobody even had a gun. <laughs> Grandma's walking around. The guy, a guy dressed up as, as a, what was he, a Viking? I mean, I don't know what the hell he was, you know. Uh, and, and then it says a prayer in the, uh, in, in the uh, chamber. That's what he did. He got down his knee and said a prayer. And they put him in jail for a while for that. Boy, that sounds like a insurrection. Insurrection. Yes, indeed. That's an insurrection. But anyway, so I wanted to give you the good news. So the Democrats changed the rules around when you, how and when, if and how you can contest an election on the uh, House floor and maybe even in the Senate. I, I don't remember. And I, uh, because they didn't want Pence or, you know, Trump to be able to contest that election, although we all know there was a lot of Ill irregularities in that election. Boy, I got the word out somewhat. Uh, word salad, boy. Maybe me and Kamala should have a have a meal together. But uh, so anyway, uh, so now since they changed those rules, it's going to make it very difficult for whoever wins to contest the election because they basically said you can't do it, even though the Constitution says you can. They changed the rules on the floor, so that might backfire on them. Although if they win the House, I guess they could just change the rules back, right? That's what Democrats would do. You know, they don't care if it's in your face. They just do it, man. <laughs> you got to respect evil people, right? So uh, that was the, uh, the next election story. Another piece of good news was out of Arizona. A lot of people are voting early there. And that's, uh, that's good because if you remember what happened to Kerry Lake in the last election, was all the Republicans were going in to vote on election day, and then the uh, the the polling the voting machines didn't work. Uh, there was all kinds of crazy, especially in what is it is it Mariopa County? Is that in, in is right in yeah that's in Arizona, uh, and of course same thing happened in Atlanta, Georgia, but I uh, but much much worse in, in Arizona because the woman that became governor was actually running the election. <laughs> Boy, she rigged that, didn't she? She did a good job, you know, because the ballots were printed. Uh, a certain size and they couldn't run them through. So that God knows how many votes got counted wrong or didn't get counted. I mean, think about it. You're only going to wait there on election day so many hours before you're just going to go home. You know, because a lot of those people had to go to work the next day. So now I think the message has gotten out. Put your ballot in early. Now, I want to tell you, don't put your ballot in a drop box. Okay, there's been some of them set on fire all across the country in Republican areas. All right, so you can drive, you can find out. There's there's the main voting area where the building where all the ballots get taken to also has a ballot drop box, and they got cameras everywhere. And I guarantee you, no Democrat lunatic, Antifa, BLM person is going to hit the main voting uh, area and and set the drop box on fire there. Plus, they've got security guards everywhere, too. You imagine working that job. So if you go to the main drop area, which, by the way, I had to drive, it was 45 minutes to an hour to get there, you know, but it, traffic. You know, we got Florida, unfortunately, when, when I first moved here, there was no traffic. So that's what I, I wanted to tell you. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I just... I can't make it in there. Okay, if you can't make it, put it in the drop box. I, I understand. You, we can all only do the best we can, but at least make sure you vote. I mean, my God, I'm hearing that a lot of Christian conservatives aren't even going to vote. What the hell? Can't they see that the inflation's gone up? Don't they worry about the fact they're paying more for gas and more at the grocery store? Do they worry about the fact that the dollar's going to cease to exist? Oh, the other good news, I forgot to tell you. Boy, I'm just full of election news. Pennsylvania, uh, they were um, in some of the Republican areas, they were turning people away from being able to put their ballots in, especially in the Amish area. What is that, Lancaster? Yeah, Land I'm glad I remembered. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. 
they were turning everybody away because I think like 80,000 Amish are going to vote this election. They don't even usually vote. So that's a huge, huge turnaround in Pennsylvania. But anyway, what they did was they sent the police in there and some uh, supposed poll workers and they were telling them they couldn't vote. No, no, we're, we're shutting down the line at one in the afternoon. Well, the Pennsylvania law says you have to stay open, I think, till five o'clock. And of course, that got contested. And so now those ballot areas are opened up. Now, Elon Musk says if you see some irregular, irregularities, uh, you know, I encourage you to just go out and look at, sit at a Dropbox, man. Sit at a Dropbox and just kind of keep an eye on it. You know, have your phone handy. If you see the same person, you know, I mean, film everybody that goes to that, that uh, Dropbox. But that, if you see, if you recognize the same person, Elon Musk said bring it to his attention on X and he's going to get the word out. So, I, uh, you know, that's that's what I'm telling you. Speaking of X getting back to the election. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't mean to talk about the election so much. I wanted to get to some other news. But uh, anyway, it turns out the Kamala Harris campaign was uh, uh, changing. They've got tro trolls out there. Or trolls, what do you call them? Uh, well, it's community notes. But I don't know what you call people that go out and, you know, post many, many times. Oh, God dang it. I, I forgot. I was my bot. I mean, they're more or less a human bot. Let's just put it that way. And so what they were doing was they were changing some of the lies that got community noted on X and saying, no, this isn't a lie. And so they were, they were, and they're paid, paid operatives. And so they were changing the, uh, the algorithm uh, of X. So that you really, you know, all these things that got community noted were uncommunity noted. And Elon is actually looking into that right now to see what's going on with all of that. But the funny part about that is, is the Democrats were doing the, what was it, Victoria Newland? She came out, she said, Russia is interfering with our election. <laughs> I can't even believe they're going to play that card again. I mean, if you know a Democrat, do you think that, ask them, you think Russia's interfering in our election? Hell no, the Democrats are interfering in the election. <laughs> they're the only ones trying to change things. And you notice how all these stories, not one is about Republicans trying to vote many, many times. It's always a Democrat. Democrats cheat, cheat, cheat. I'm just telling you, that's who they are. So we got to, uh, we got to get everybody out get voted. I don't think there's any other stories. I, did I finish with Carrie Lake? Uh, well, anyway, a lot of people voting early. So it looks like she may pull it over the top because this time they're not going to be able to, to cheat as much. I'm sure they're going to try. And I think there was actually, they caught them doing something with the ballots here recently. That might be just out of Michigan, but if I find that story, I'll put it in this video. All right, so let's Let's get to a, a different topic. If I think of something else, I'll put it before this. But anyway, I wanted to, I found a video on, uh, you know, one of, one of my big things is, is about the uh, genocide taking place in Gaza. And you can cut it off right here if you're a Christian and you want all Palestinians dead. That's fine. That's up to you. Like I said, it, it'd be a good thing for the Israelis because I think any Palestinians left alive are going to want revenge. You know, I... I keep giving the story, you kill my wife, you kill my dog, you kill my kids, and I'm still alive. I'm coming after you. I don't care for the rest of my life. I'll dedicate that. I'll make that my main mission in life. You know, so I imagine any Palestinians that are left alive. Ah, I remember the story now. So it was the UN. It was at the UN. Okay, this is kind of unrelated, but let's get this out of the way first. So they, they, every year or every so often, they put up for a vote about the sanctions that the United States has on Cuba. And the UN usually votes, and uh, most, uh, most every country votes against the sanctions, and then there's always the United States that votes for it, and maybe you know, Britain and a few others. Well, this time, we were all alone. The entire UN voted that the sanctions should be lifted on Cuba, except the United States and Israel and one country that abstained and I'm going to guess that was Great Britain, but I don't know the country's name that abstained. Think about that. That means that everybody in the entire world wants the sanctions. I want the sanctions listed on Cuba. You know, I mean, I, if, if I hadn't broke my neck, I would love to go to Cuba. I, I hear that, you know, there's some great beachfront property there. You know, you could revitalize it. I mean, even, even though it's a communist government or whatever, there's good people that live there. 
there's no reason they should be living in poverty. You know, and, it, and, and, and if we started to trade with them and everything, that would diminish the Russian, you know, everybody, oh, Russia's bad, Putin's bad. You know, but er, they would dimish, diminish Russia's ability to manipulate the politics in Cuba, okay? You know, right now, I mean, you know, Cuba just needs a lifeline. So of course they're gonna go to Russia, right? I mean, it's just kind of silly that uh, Americans can't see that. Plus it'd be a great place to visit. And then we could get some big companies maybe go in there. Not that I'm for big companies, but I, I would love to see some nice resorts. That's, you know, that's just a puddle jump to get there. And so a lot of Americans could enjoy a nice vacation in Cuba. So, and plus I, maybe some people might want to move there. I mean, you know, I, I know the government's oppressive, but maybe that uh, if they start getting the economy and everything going, it could become a better place to live. You never know. I'd, I'd like to see them get a chance. So, uh, Anyway, get, get on to Ukraine for just a minute. I talked about this in a previous video, was um, that the, uh, it, the that, that whole Korean story is just a, it's just a narrative. They're just trying to distract you from what's really going on in Ukraine. The Kirsch, the Kirsch invasion is just about done. Within two weeks, like I said, 25,000 casualties was the last number. Each day that's probably going up by a thousand. So there's probably about 28,000 and the Russians uh, there's also another report that 100,000 uh, Ukrainians have, uh, have uh, what do you call it, um, defected, not defected, but uh, gone AWOL. Yeah, God dang it. Sometimes my brain don't work. That have gone AWOL. They don't want to fight. So some of them have probably disappeared into the country. Um, maybe some of them actually made it to the Russian lines. There's also reports coming out that civilians are trying to get to the Russian front lines and the Ukrainians are killing them if they find them. And that, I, I can verify that with just one video that I saw. Now, I don't know how many incidents are taking place, but that's taking place. It's just a disaster in Ukraine. And I don't know how long Zelensky has on this planet. That was another confession through projection was well, Zelensky was talking about the fact that uh, they wouldn't have tried to take that nuclear power plant in Kirsch, and that wasn't the the point of the mission, but why even say that if that wasn't the point of the mission? <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody had kind of forgotten about it until he raised the, the issue again. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's because there's Tomahawk missiles. So Zelensky was trying to get some Tomahawk missiles to launch into uh, Russia. Thank God the Pentagon said no. I mean, we could have been facing World War III. Russia already said that if we launched long range missiles into the heartland of Russia, that's nuclear war, baby, and we all die. Just saying. So we got to be, got to be on our toes about that. American people don't know nothing about it. They just go go about their way. All right. So that's uh, it for Ukraine. Uh, if I'm, if, unless I think of something else, we'll finish the video off right here. Peace out, and stay free.